After talking about his dementia diagnosis earlier this year, the singer Tony Christie told Breakfast it's quite simply never going to hold him back. Yeah, and true to his word, he's now revealed to us that he will be recording Thank You For Being A Friend on behalf of the Music For Dementia campaign for this year's Thank You Day, which aims to recognise the work done by Britain's unsung carers. So Tim Muffet has been to meet him and his family. She's my greatest help, so, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate. He's very loved. Tonight, under the perfect sky. Tony Christie has been married to Sue for 55 years. I gaze into outer space and all I can see. But there are new challenges ahead. <laughs> is your place. Suddenly, about 18 months ago, I'm struggling with my crossword. I'm thinking, what, what the hell's wrong with me? And I started complaining to my wife, Sue. And she said, let's go and see a specialist. And she said, yeah, you've got the, the, the beginning of dementia. How are you since your, your diagnosis? I'm fine. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm st still here working and I'm not ashamed of what I've got. You're thinking positive. I still meet people. Uh, you know, I've known for donkey's years. The only thing is that I forget their names. It can feel overwhelming for you, for the people around you. Back in January, Tony talked about his diagnosis on the breakfast sofa. I met a lot of people who've got it, and they're worried about it. Mm. And I'm, I'm not worried about it. The fact that you decided to talk about it publicly, how has that helped, do you think? I've been stopped so many times by different people in the shops or in the streets to thank me for going on TV and saying, you know, not to be afraid of dementia. There's nothing to be ashamed about it. They've right. actually gone to be tested themselves yes yes it's time to really cherish the important things in life like each other i guess is that something you've felt more than ever oh yes it does make you more aware i don't go anywhere without seeing my wife anymore we've had some some great times haven't we yeah we've moved around a bit yeah <laughs> he's always had a sense of humor he's not lost that and i don't think he ever will i think that will always be there. Yeah. Um, it drives me crazy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. Travel down a road and back again. Tony's latest project came about because of his diagnosis. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. The charity Music for Dementia asked him to record a song for Thank You Day, which began in 2021. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! A way of paying tribute to the people and communities who made a difference during the pandemic. The third annual Thank You Day will be Sunday the 2nd of July, and Tony's recording of this song, Thank You For Being A Friend, will be the official anthem. It'll be finished over the next few weeks and released at the end of May. It was originally a hit for Andrew Gold in 1978. It's a song Tony loves. That's what I've tried to be all my, all my life, is, is to make the lyric matter. It says it all, really, doesn't it? Thank you for being a friend. Is this the way to Amarillo? There is, of course, one song for which Tony will always be best known. Dreaming dreams of Amarillo. Is This the Way to Amarillo was first released in 1971. Did you know it was going to be such a massive hit? Yeah, everybody knew it. All the musicians that were playing on it, the, the, the choir and everything, they all went, this is a smash. In 2005, it finally reached number one in the UK. I got this phone call from Peter Kay saying I want to use Amarillo on, on, uh, on this comic relief uh, thing I'm doing. And a whole new dance move was born. Yeah, that is a classic song. Is it ever a struggle to stay positive? Not at the moment, no. There, there will be a cure, eventually. Well, the specialist that actually did the tests on me said that the fact that I was, I was a singer for a living and music was forever around me, she says, that is, music is one of the top therapies for dementia.
All I wanted to do was, was sing for a living. I, well, that's, that's what I was, I felt that's what I was put on the earth to do. And that's what I did. And that's what you'll carry on doing. I will carry on doing it. That is a threat. <laughs> <laughs> It's lovely to see that smile and the yeah. positivity, isn't it, from, from Tony and Sue. Thank you so much to them for talking to our reporter, Tim Muffet. Well, Sarah Metcalf from Music for Dementia joins us now. Good morning, Sarah. Thank morning. you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. So how did this idea about Tony and the song come about? Well, it was actually BBC Breakfast. that uh, The Music for Dementia campaign is all about trying to get the message out that music can help dementia. And we saw him on your sofa in January and were just blown away by how positive he is. And, of course, his singing and his abilities. And we just thought, wow, what, how amazing it would be if he would help us with this year's Thank You Day with singing an anthem for Thank You Day on the 2nd of July. And thank you for being a friend. It's the perfect anthem, the, isn't it? Yeah. The perfect song. It's so positive, it's so uplifting. People can sing along with it. We, It brings back memories, which I think is one of the powers of, of music uh, for people living with dementia. Uh, for me, it brings back the Golden Girls on yes, Friday yes, nights. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Because definitely. you know what That'll fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, it, and just the song, him singing that, and then we discovered that he knew uh, the guy who wrote it. So we thought, well, so these sti stars are aligning. And uh, we were lucky enough that he said yes, he would sing it. How does music help people who are living with dementia, who have that diagnosis? What, do they have to be musical already? How does it work? I think the simple answer is no, they don't need to be musical already. Um, and that you can see in the package a lot of the ways that it can help. Music's very unusual neurologically. If you were to listen to music and we were to scan your brain, it would light up like a fireworks display with different reactions in different parts of the brain, including the bits for connected with memory and emotion. So if you have got a condition like dementia where your brain is being damaged, then the music can still reach the parts that are not damaged and that that can then open up a way to stay connected with loved ones, to, to sing, to dance uh, and, and to bring people closer together. And to be taken back to times and places and memories along the path. Yeah. We call it sometimes that flashback feeling that you get, that when you hear a song and you're maybe driving along and it takes you back to uh, your youth, um, that when you get that flashback feeling, it means that the music is very deeply rooted to your m m memories and emotions. And uh, I think that's a, a thing we can all relate to. And yeah. So part of it is the memory of maybe taking you back to a specific place that you remember from many years ago that's deeply embedded. But also, we've seen on this programme, haven't we, the power of writing new music, listening to new music. Paul and Nick Harvey. Yeah. I think a lot of mm. your viewers will remember Paul and Nick Harvey and see how the the power the the power of music to still remain even as somebody's dementia journey continues becomes a way of them connecting and staying in touch and the uh, I think that just getting that message out there that music is in all our lives and that we can all use it as a tool to remain connected. Because I think one of the things about dementia is it can be a very isolating condition for the person who has it, but also for the uh, families, friends, neighbours who are with them. And that music is a tool that can be available that can bring people back together again just by making a playlist or singing a song or joining a choir. Um, and that's the sort of activity we're hoping everyone will get involved with on the 2nd of July for so, Thank You so Day. So how will that work? Oh, there are so <laughs> many things going on. Um, we've, got, we've had great support from the music industry uh, who have been involved in helping us get the record underway with Tony Christie. But we've also got uh, Championing Social Care are going to be opening 1,500 care homes where we're hoping kids' choirs and other musical events will be taking place on the 2nd of July. Uh, the Girl Guides are going to be involved. Um, the Casio are involved. And we've already had uh, more than 200 uh, dementia choirs want to sign up to be involved wow. and hopefully sing Tony's song uh, uh, and get that all underway. A big sing-along for us all. That's kind of leading the way, isn't it? But for someone who perhaps is caring for someone with dementia today, what small thing can they do? Is it as simple as maybe just putting the radio on? I think it can be as simple as putting the radio on, but I think 
it's also thinking of tunes that you think that person may connect with. Uh, that there are resources out there. You can go to our website um, at musicfordementia.org.uk and uh, get see some of the resources available that can help you find the right music to touch somebody. You can also join a dementia choir, go to a live event. Uh, there are dementia-friendly events that go on at most theatres and um, we've got great partnerships with orchestras around the country. And just think of ways of involving music in even small ways. It's not going to cure dementia, but mm. it will. It can make life easier. It can make that, life that easier. Brilliant documentaries that Vicky McClure did for oh, the BBC as well. That was, yeah. that was brilliant. Our Dementia wasn't it? Choir, yeah, a, yeah. a fabulous yeah. example of what can be done. And yeah. Vicky's been a wonderful advocate for Music for Dementia. And what about Tony Christie as an advocate? What does it mean? Because it would be very easy for somebody with his fame and, and, and brand, if you like, not to talk about this openly and, and to deal with it quietly because he might worry about performing, that kind of thing. So, so, so what was it the fact that he's being so honest and open? So honest and so open and so he should be, that there shouldn't be any shame about this. And uh, I think, as you could see in the package, he's still singing, he's still working. He and Sue are still connecting and music is part of that story. And we're so fortunate that he's agreed to help us with the anthem for uh, Thank You Day on the 2nd of July. Oh, well, that's great. It's lovely to meet you. Thanks so much for coming in, Sarah Metcalf from Music for Dementia. Thank you for coming in. And uh, as Sarah said, Thank You Day is on the 2nd of July. So it's time to, uh, to get ready, get practicing. Okay. We look forward to the sing-along. <laughs> we'll join you, in, won't we? Of course, always.